And yeah, he just got on my nerves. But is he still a mate, or is he just? He's still a mate. He came around yeah. last night for the party. Oh, all right. Yeah. But he um he just like when he turned around to me and went, oh, can I be CEO of Trash Arts? I was like, the fuck are you talking about? The CEO. Because he was he was talking business minds. Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. like when he sort of I said to him, look, you need to think more creatively. And he was like, I don't think like that anymore. I'm a businessman. I was like, that's sad. You can't be a filmmaker and just be business. Someone once said to me, if you want to make money, be a banker. Exactly. And creativity, you don't expect it. This is the thing. He's someone who works on impulse, so he's expecting the money to come straight away, and it wasn't. So he just kind of thought, oh, what's the point of me doing this? So have you made any money out of this, you lot? Uh, it's more the gigs and stuff that make us money. You make, it, you make a bit of revenue, don't you? I mean, you might not make a profit, I guess. But Yeah, I mean, Jackson does music videos at the moment. He's charging between 150 <coughs> and 200. Are you doing right on that? We've only shot one, and he did it for 75 as a starter. He's yeah. got about... Because I've had about eight bands approach me in the last four months saying music videos. And all I've got to do is go and talk to Jackson. It's tricky though, isn't it? Because they probably ain't got much money either. But if they know Jackson's base rate, if they can't afford to pay 150, 200 quid, then they don't get a video. And if you've got a band, five members of a band, that's like 50, 40 quid each. Yeah. So that's not too bad, really. It's a lot of work, though, for 200 quid. I mean, I'm... I'm you know, I've had a go at doing them for 200 quid and it's a lot of work for 200 quid. It should be a lot more, but because Jack's just started up, yeah. there's no point, he hasn't even shot like a short film yet. Well, the guy, the guy in the industry rate for a pop video, uh, this was a few years ago, Kevin Godley said he couldn't do a pop video for less than 30 grand. Yeah, but that's a long time ago. Yeah, no, and then that was changed. like 10 years ago probably. Yeah, well, times are changing now. They, oh, the yeah, budget yeah. used to be massive now, that no, even the big... Videos but no, but that's what I mean. It's like for it to be, we should be charged for, for, it to be, for it to be an industry, you need to be able to charge that sort of money. Otherwise, it's cottage industry, isn't it? You know. So. I just feel he needs to like have something to sell first because because all he's got to sell are short films that I've made or Tom's made because his short film that he was working on just kept falling through because of the bloody weather. <laughs> and one road he doesn't like to admit that he was part of the direction for that. Right, right. Because the footage is shit. Is that the one that's turned into a short? The footage is terrible, it's absolutely, because I decided as a producer, I thought, I'll give them freedom, I'll and step who, away. Who's, who's editing that one? Um, Nin, our, uh, the one that does our promos and did... Um, is that who we uh, uh, talked to in the talk? Yes, about? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That sounds a bit seedy actually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but she's in London at the moment, but she's also editing um, a promo and doing a music video and some give some short films. So how do you normally get your stuff edited? I go to different editors. Tom now edits, so he does his own stuff. Um, Mike, a guy called Jack Hawkins, who's the slowest editor known to man. The guy who was really supposed to edit the Wasters. <laughs> who's the slowest editor known to man? Jack Hawkins. I love the guy, and he's good at what he does, but you give him footage, and five months later, you go, what have you done? He's like, oh, I'm working on this scene. It's like, you've been working on this scene for a long time now. <laughs> but his professional job is editing, so okay. he doesn't get the chance to the creative stuff. So yeah, I've got those, I've got those people... Um, and Dan's, Dan's editing a short film for me that we shot back in October which will be done for the beginning of May is he speedy? yeah Dan, Dan will get it done in a couple of days it's been delayed yeah. because he's got too much work going on that's my middle class film I shot it with some posh private school kids and it was all shot in old Portsmouth so it right. looks really nice and rich and it was, it was a short film that one of our actresses wrote and she wanted it's like guy basically girlfriend died meets another girl at the end it's all happy and um, and then a a um, three way <laughs> no but I decided that um, it was too soft so I gave a bit of a rewrite she still dies but she slits her wrist rather than jumping off a cliff and when she when he gets with another girl he can't get over the other girl so it goes all wrong so I made it darker and nasty mm. it was all shot beautifully we we did a scene where there was a rainbow in the background. They were kissing next to the oh, scene wow. So, yeah, it's lovely. But um, it's a bit weird, though, because the actor was 17. The girl that killed herself was, like, 14. But she looked like she was about 18. They didn't do anything too dodgy. <laughs> it's, all, it's all legal. You get released? Do you have to get releases for <clears throat> minus? Probably. But you didn't? No. It's a short film. I always feel with short films, you don't put that much effort into it. I have a really bad attitude when it comes to short films. Well, that's the thing, it? make the art, move on. Yeah. yeah. Like, we had to spend four, like, I don't know, five, six, eight months working on a short film, and I'd just be like, do a feature. Might as well. 
Although I'm starting to do that more towards short films. But, I don't know. It's more fun to do films. I think it depends on... It depends on what... <coughs> where you're at. Like, get, I mean, in a way, I think... You're more dealing with what you're making feature-wise in the now, whereas he's looking at it... You know when we asked him that time when we talked to him, I didn't realise that he's actually looking at it as a stepping stone to get into work on larger productions. Oh, yeah, he's... The thing is, Riyadh will get somewhere. He's already won plenty of awards and... But you see what I mean? Because of that, he's obviously looking to create some stuff that he spends... He's putting a lot of time in creating something which he can build up a folio of stuff. Well, the noticeable difference... Whereas you'll have a... You've got a big portfolio of stuff... But it's about you. You're like a. You're more of a. You know, people are more like to invest in you, mm. and your whole, and they'll look at what you've done. No, hang on a minute. What am I saying? You kind of. Um, but you know, you've got. But it comes with you, and you can say, well, "Yeah, well, sure, we made this thing. We could have spent like, we could have, we could have made it better looking by spending two years on it. But I could have made another ten films in that time." Yeah, that's that's how that's worked. You know, um, have you seen Kill List? No, I might go to me and I haven't don't seen it. Well, this is how I compare me and Riyadh. Riyadh loves Atonement. You know the film Atonement? No. Um, it's a British period piece. Yeah. It's all beautifully shot. 